how to, you know, well, what, what it came down to is I was learning how to operate in kingdom finances and started realizing that the Father has given me the kingdom. So, and, it, and the reason is, and see what that did for me is it freed me to do kingdom business. In other words, to work for God and do what he's doing. So I had to change my mindset from a let me see what we can do to let me see what God wants us to do. Because if you're going to see what you can do, then you're always going to go by what you have. But if you can, if you can decide what God wants you to do, now you know what God is willing to pay for. You see? And so then you move in that direction. But then I also had to learn how to give in a, in a daily you know, lifestyle. And, and I had to start treating people the way I wanted to be treated by God. Because a lot of people, like God said, <coughs> people out there don't know him. And so they look to us like we're him. So we have to represent him and treat them the way we get treated. And God treats us pretty good. Amen? Amen. He takes care of us. And the more you trust him, the more he takes care of you, and the better he can, because then you'll also pass it forward. This is the way this works. This is how the kingdom works. Yeah. Now, I'm saying all that because <clears throat> we have a tendency to pray for us. But what I've learned is that the more... I spend my time praying for others and blessing them with what I can do, and then I'm praying for them. It's amazing because the less I have to pray for my own stuff, because while I'm taking care of their stuff, God's taking care of my stuff. Amen. And so things continue to grow. Now, here's the thing. If you, sowing and reaping is a law, and if you sow, you will reap. But the key is to start sowing and so that the reaping can get started. And then, as we've, and this is what a lot of people do, you'll hear them say it a lot of times, uh, you know, now pray and see what the Lord would have you give or have you do. You know, it's talking about finances or uh, offering or something like that. Now, technically speaking, that is not biblical, right? It is not biblical to ask God what you're supposed to give. God, because the reason being is because that puts you in, now get this, what you do when you do that, you are putting God in charge of your reaping. God doesn't want to be in charge of your reaping. He said, he made the rule very simple. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. God said, you decide. How do you want to reap? He didn't say, ask me what to give. Why? Because that would put it back on him. Now, let me give you a hint. If you ask him what to give, you're not going to do it. Why? Because he doesn't look at what you got. See, when we give, many times we give based on what bills are coming out. So we look at what we've got and we decide how much we can give based on after the fact of what we know we got, we got to pay for. So it's like, okay, if, my, if I have $1,000 and my bills are 700 then I take that 700 out first and go, okay, so now there's 300 left. So now, how much of that 300 am I going to give? That's the way most people think along those lines. But see, God doesn't think that way. God looks at the need, and he's looking at trying to grow you. So he, what he's going to tell you to do, you're not going to do. Matter of fact, you'll say, God, how much am I supposed to Now, if you're going to ask him, and he's going to answer you on it, and you say, God, what am I supposed to give? He's going to say, all of it. <laughs> and you're going to say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> right? Because you're going to think the devil's trying to rob you, right? But in reality, why? So he tells you, you decide. And you say, well, how much should I give? He says, you decide. Do you want to sow? Do you want to reap sparingly? You want to reap bountifully? What do you want to do? And so, well, I don't know. And he says, now, he, he, but he tells you how to know what the right amount is. You know what the right amount is? As much as you can give cheerfully. See, at, the, at, the, at that level where you can no longer give cheerfully and you start to give grudgingly, better stop because anything you give past that ain't going to help you. You understand? Now, I will tell you this. And when I say you better stop, I'm not telling you to stop. I'm saying <clears throat> at that point, you are no longer giving cheerfully. But it's just like eating. If you want to go beyond where you're at, you give more than you can give cheerfully until, and you keep giving until the grudgingly becomes cheerfully. 
Does that make sense? You stretch yourself. Right? Now, another way. Now, we're told to love. Is that right? So a good way to learn to love. Because there's some people that are harder to love than others. Right? Some people are easy to love at a distance. You understand what I mean by that? In other words, you get around them, it's a whole lot harder to love them. But when at a distance, you can love them, right? But I will tell you how to love people near you, okay? When you recognize that you're not loving that person, then you go buy them the best gift you can afford. You buy them the best gift. Or you give them, just give them the cash, either way, right? And you give it to them. And then after you give it to them, you stop and see, okay, now how do I feel about that person? And you go, no, nah, I still don't like them. <laughs> give some more. Do it again. Give again. Why? Because where your treasure is, your heart is. And you keep giving until you love them. And I promise you, if you keep giving to them, you're going to realize that and go, man, i got to love these people. This is breaking me right now. I, can't, I don't want to have to keep giving this. So I'm, I'm going to love them on purpose. It will cause you to love faster. All right? I'm just, I'm just giving you some hints. All right? 